Seeking justice in the Aurora movie theater shooting, it's day two of the preliminary hearing to determine if James Holmes should stand trial. And this morning, emotional 911 calls are played in court. 7 News reporter Lindsay Sablon has just stepped out of the hearing. And Lindsay, one of the calls was made by a family member of the little girl who was killed. And Bertha, it was a really chilling phone call. What we heard was a teenage cousin of six-year-old Veronica Moser Sullivan, who was shot and killed in the theater that night. She tells dispatch that her two cousins were shot. That was Veronica Moser Sullivan and her mother, Ashley Moser, and that one is not breathing. The other 911 call we heard was from the very first person inside Theater 9 to call 911 that night. That was also very hard to listen to as it was only 27 seconds long. And during that 27 seconds, all we heard were gunshots around 30 at least. Now, we have video this morning of attorneys, detectives, family members all walking into the courtroom just before 930. It was not as crowded this morning as it was yesterday, but still there are three different courtrooms where people are listening to this chilling, chilling testimony. Detective Todd Fredrickson, who was on the stand yesterday, finished today. He talked about one victim who hid in the, the trash bin area behind Theater 9, and she described seeing one man dressed in a helmet. Police later saying that was James Holmes. Now, a very similar scene in the courtroom today uh, as it was yesterday. These sketches coming from the courtroom yesterday. James James Holmes, a suspected shooter, just sitting there as detectives talked about what they found. An FBI bomb technician said that they found two handguns in Holmes' car, as well as armor for his neck and for his chest. They also talked about Holmes' apartment. Holmes told police that he had booby trapped his apartment. Today, detectives talked about how they found a five foot long tripwire that was connected from the door of his apartment to a frying pan and also a uh, bomb. Model, and there was chemicals in either one of those, and if mixed together, they would explode or cause some kind of fire. Holmes had planned to play music on a delay on his computer. He hoped that neighbors would then call police. Police would go to his apartment to divert, divert all law enforcement there while he was at the theater. So it seemed like he had a lot of plans in place there. Again, very difficult. As I was leaving, it looked like they were just about to go into a quick break this morning. Very chilling testimony, Lindsay. We're hearing about this so-called trigger device outside his apartment as well for the first time. Yeah, you know, Bertha, and this is the first time we're really hearing about it. what that bomb technician told us was that Holmes had placed a remote control car with a remote as well as a boom box in a white trash bag of sorts in a dumpster outside of his apartment. And what he told police was that he had planned for music to play on that boom box that would attract someone to the dumpster. They would see the remote control car and want to play with it. Once they played with that car, it would trigger again either an explosion or some kind of fire in his apartment. Very complex. All right, thanks, Lindsay, for the update. We appreciate it. We want to show the line of victims and their relatives waiting to go into the hearing. This was yesterday. Some tell us they just could not return today because yesterday's testimony was so graphic. I don't feel hate or, 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 or anger toward them. I just don't feel anything toward them. I really don't. It's hard to explain. I was crying like everybody else. I, I, I couldn't keep... I couldn't keep I'm going to cry now. It just is really hard talking about that pretty girl, a seven year old. Uh, I don't know. It just it just really is heartbreaking. Tough testimony. That's Sam Sudani, who was there to support his daughter, Farah, who was seriously injured in the shooting. And as we've reported, she lost her spleen and a kidney and needed reconstructive surgery on her leg. A man who was wounded in the shooting could be going home in a couple of weeks. Caleb Medley was struck in the head. He lost an eye and suffered some brain injury. He has spent nearly five months learning to stand. Medley also is working on trying to speak again. Caleb's wife, Katie, gave birth only days after the shooting to the couple's first child, a son named Hugo. Medley will be back home on January 23rd, which is a day before Hugo turns six months old.